Write one, then two, then three, then four, and so on, like this forever. Similarly, start from two, and then write three, then four, then five, and so on, like this forever. Now just divide these two numbers, then these two, then these two, and so on. Now multiply all of them together like this. What you are now looking at is not just random fractions, but it is a special chain of ratios that step by step is getting closer and closer to one of the most magical numbers in all of math, pi divided by two. Like take two over one, it is two. Then multiply it with this next ratio, two over three, to get four over three, which is almost 1.33. Now multiply that with the next ratio, 4 over 3, to get 16 over 9, which is almost 1.77. Then multiply it with the next ratio, 4 over 5, to get 64 over 45, which is almost 1.42. If you keep doing this again and again, the value will slowly settle down towards pi by 2, and if you double it, you will see it closing in towards pi. I will plot the graph between the number of terms and the product value times 2, and you can see how beautifully it converges to pi. If we group the numbers like this, then we can also write the infinite product in a compact form like this, where the left part of the group is of the form 2k over 2k minus 1, and the right part of the group is of the form 2k over 2k plus 1, and k runs from 1 to infinity. But you might wonder, what is pi doing here? We are just multiplying simple fractions one after another, and that too using just natural numbers. So, is there an analytical way to see why this product approaches pi? The answer is yes, and that is where the power of calculus comes in, specifically integrals. Take the function sine of x raised to the power n. Now, Take the definite integral of this function from 0 to pi, which will show its exact area under this function. Let's call this area as i of n. For example, if n is 0, then the curve is just a flat line at 1, and the integral value is simply pi. If n is 1, then the curve is sine of x, and the area comes out to be 2. These will be our starting points. Now here comes the actual trick. Now we will use integration by parts. Look at this solution properly. Using it, we can show that the i of n is always equal to n minus 1 divided by n times i of n minus 2. That's the recurrence relation we obtain. Now replace the n with 2n on both sides to rewrite this recurrence relation for even powers. Similarly, we can also consider it just for odd powers by replacing n with 2n plus 1 here. Next, we will use the reduction technique to make this i of 2n as a function of i of 0. We have this relationship. Now just substitute 2n as 2n minus 2, and thereby i of 2n minus 2 can also be written as 2n minus 3 by 2n minus 2 times i of 2n minus 4, right? Similarly, this can be reduced to 2n minus 5 by 2n minus 4 times i of 2n minus 6, right? So, we will continue this all the way down till we reach i of 0, which is nothing but pi. In compact form, we can write this as pi times product of 2k minus 1 over 2k, where k goes from 1 to n. We will do similar thing for odd powers. In compact form, we can write this as 2 times product of 2k over 2k plus 1, where k goes from 1 to n. Next is to consider the ratio of these two integrals, odd over even. We get 2 over pi times product k equals 1 to n of 2, k over 2k plus 1 by 2, k minus 1 over 2, k or simply 2k over 2k minus 1 times 2k over 2k plus 1. And hey, remember, this is the exact product that we are interested in. Now, what to do? How to find the value of this ratio? 
Let us see what happens as n increases, because we are interested in this product as n approaches infinity, right? We know that if any value x is in the range 0 to 1, the x to the n decreases as n increases. Like if we take x as half, so x will be greater than x square, which will be 1 over 4, and x square will be greater than x cube, which will be 1 over 8, right? Now in this range of 0 to pi, sine of x is always between 0 and 1. So sine of x raised to 2, n minus 1 will be greater than sine of x raised to 2n, which will be greater than sine of x raised to 2n plus 1. So if we take the integral from 0 to pi of each of these functions, we will get the same inequality like this. So they will become i of 2n plus 1 less than or equal to i of 2n less than or equal to i of 2n minus 1. Next, we will divide all of them by i of 2n plus 1 to get this first term as 1. Then this will become i of 2n over i of 2n plus 1, and this will become i of 2n minus 1 by i of 2n plus 1. But hey, look here. This ratio is nothing but 2n plus 1 over 2n. Now let us take the limit as n goes to infinity. Here we have 1. On the right side, divide both numerator and denominator by n to get 2 plus 1 over n by 2, and as n goes to infinity, this value becomes 1. This means by sandwich theorem, this ratio of i of 2n over i of 2n plus 1 will be squeezed between 1 and 1, and thus the limit of this ratio will be exactly equal to 1. Reverse this ratio to get i of 2n plus 1 over i of 2n equal to 1. Oh my god, look here. This is the same ratio that we need, and thus substitute it here to get this. Finally, take this 2 over pi, this side, to get the product of 2k over 2k minus 1 times 2k over 2k plus 1 as k goes from 1 to n and n approaches infinity equals pi by 2, and that's it. That was super duper cool, wasn't it? By the way, this product is known as the Wallace product, which is named after the English mathematician John Wallace. He discovered it in the 17th century, and it became one of the earliest infinite product formulas ever linked directly to pi. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.